G'day. If I saw a dog and I said to you, see that cat, you'd be a bit confused. What? And then I realised, I thought, oh, you know what I meant. If I see a red car and I say, see that yellow car? Again, you'd roll your eyes and, oh, you know what I meant. Language, 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 language. Precise use of language is so important. And I'm always banging about it and I will continue to do so. Why? Because unless we're using specific words with specific meanings, we will have conversations which there is uh, misunderstandings, either your way or my way. You've surely participated in conversations when after a while, uh, oh, I thought you meant da 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 da. No, I thought it was clear what I was saying. You surely have encountered road signs that are confusing, but the people who wrote them know what they meant. You've got forms that you have to fill in. What does this mean? The person who wrote it knows what they meant. Exam questions. Wouldn't be mine, of course, but some other people's. Sometimes confusing because the language is not precise enough. The, always it's they knew what they meant. So uh, we've got to be very careful about that. In chemistry, I'll always try to use the terms that have been agreed upon in chemistry. There's a governing body, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC. It's a little bit like the International Olympic Committee. It's a governing body that decides all sorts of things. And amongst other things, they decide what nomenclature chemists will use. And I will try to use those all the time. But I'll warn you, some of the words that are defined in chemistry have different meanings in everyday life. It's unfortunate, we've just got to accept that. Now, why am I rabbiting on about this again today? And it's because Aussie, I don't mean to be picking on Aussie, he so often expresses his opinions that he gives me reason to give him feedback and he's learning, it's a fantastic thing to do. But yesterday in the lab, he said to me something like this. I'm working with a weak acid solution, about 0.01 mole per litre. What I, I would like to get, a stronger one, maybe 2 mole per litre. Any response to that? Mm-hmm. Okay, you knew what he meant. Okay, but, and I did too, but I could see where this could lead to problems in the future, and it's a language issue. And I want to draw attention, I want to clarify the meanings of these two, four terms, concentrated, dilute, strong, and weak. And we've got two related pairs here. One pair is concentrated and dilute. And the other two that go together are strong and weak. These two are opposite ends of a scale that talk about something about solutions. And these ones are opposite ends of a scale of something that talks about solutes that are dissolved in a solvent to make the solution we might be talking about here. Now, concentration, you know, we've talked about it before, is some measure of how crowded the solute molecules are in a solution. And regardless of how much of the solution we have, how crowded are the solute molecules in that sample? So, for example, if I had a uh, 10 mole per litre solution of something, it would contain in one litre a thousand times as many solute particles as in a point. Oh, oh, one. 0.01 molar solution. Mm -hmm. Can you try and visualise? This one's got a thousand times as many solute particles per mil, per 10 mils, per 17.3 mils, whatever. You can visualise that these might be quite crowded. These ones more separated as though in the time of a virus they are socially distancing. And we say 
that this solution, I'm sorry, that should be not mils but moles per litre, we say that this solution is more concentrated. And this one is less concentrated or alternatively more dilute. They're the two terms that we use when we're talking about how crowded the molecules are together. There's, it's a continuous scale. There's no real cutoff where something is itself concentrated or dilute, uh, although sometimes on bottles we put the terms concentrated and dilute. It really is relative term. Come to this other pair. It's talking about solutes. And as we've been saying recently, this is about whether the solute is a ionizes completely so that the solution is conducting or only some of the molecules ionized. So we've got the two words strong um, in relation to uh, whether they're electrolyte or not. All ionized and the term weak applies to the solute if only some. Ionized. Mm -hmm. So, for example, HCl, we've talked about these things before, is a strong electrolyte. That solute is a strong electrolyte. Into water, all the molecules ionize. And formic acid. We use the word weak. By using the word weak, we could have used any term at all. Squishy doodly, but we've chosen to use the word weak. IU Pack has decided to use the term weak. It's a little bit unfortunate because it's got some other connotations, but weak means straight away, as soon as we see weak about the solute, we're talking about something only some of the molecules ionize. And if you remember, uh, HCN is also weak. They're both weak, but this one's associated only about one per oh, sorry, maybe 10% of this one ionizes, only about 0.001% of this 0.01% of this one ionizes. This one is stronger. This one is weaker. Those two terms refer to how much of the solute ionizes. So we now come back to what Ozzy said in the lab yesterday. He talked about a weak, acid, weak acetic acid solution, 0.01 molar. Here he's talking about the concentration. He, he really meant the concentration. So that term should not be used. It can be confusing. What should he have used? Yes, just into dilute. And he wanted to use a stronger one. What should he have perhaps used? More concentrated. Uh, so the terms concentrated, dilute, opposite ends of the scale. This, he was talking about concentration of the solution. Nothing about the nature of the solute, which is acetic acid in this case. Uh, so, we, when we describe a solution, we use two terms. An adjective that describes the concentration of the solution, like dilute or concentrated, and an adjective that describes the solute that is dissolved in the solvent to form that solution, like strong or weak, or stronger or weaker. Mm -hmm. Let me just create a bit of board space. That'll do us. So let's suppose we're talking about a 0.01 mole per litre solution of acetic acid. Acetic acid solution. Huh? Two adjectives. I'd say this is fairly dilute. So I'd say this is a dilute solution. That's adjective referring to concentration of solution. Of, what about the solute? It's a weak electrolyte. OK. 
Okay. What about a 0.01 molar solution of hydrochloric acid? You happy if that was dilute, then I'd call this one dilute. Solution. But this ionizes completely. It's a strong electrolyte. Electrolyte. Uh -huh. A 10 molar HCl solution. Based upon that, I'd say it's concentrated solution. And based upon that, I'd say it's a strong electrolyte. Make sense? Can you give me an example of a dilute solution of a weak acid, weak electrolyte? Okay, you can start with uh, a dilute solution. So, yep, that's one that we pretty safely, three noughts, one mole per litre, we describe that as dilute, of a weak electrolyte. Yes, we could have used acetic acid, we, the one that we use in swimming pools, hypochlorous acid is a dilute solution of a weak electrolyte. Mm -hmm. Just to go back, Ozzy was using the term weak to refer to the solution. When that term is reserved for how strong an electrolyte the solute is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I need a bit more space again. A couple of challenges for you. One, first one, uh, a 0 0.001 molar solution of sucrose. Describe it in general terms. Two adjectives about the solution. Dilute, no question. No one would argue with that, I don't think. Sucrose. Yes, yes, yes. It's infinitesimally small amount ionizes. We essentially say for practical purposes, that's a non-electrolyte. That's the extreme end of the scale. Weak, 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 so weak that we don't, we regard it as no ions at all. Now, I'm going to give you an example where I'm going to try to trap you only to make you more aware of the point I'm trying to make. All right? A bit tricky. Give me an example of a weak solution of a weak electrolyte. Okay, any offers? For example, what might be put here? Brilliant, brilliant. You're on to me and it's great. This is a nonsense terminology in that context. We don't use the term weak to describe concentration. This should have been dilute. Excellent, excellent. Right? Language, language, language. In every profession, whether it's chemistry or carpentry, words have been adopted, taken on board to refer to stuffs or to phenomena or to concepts. Mm -hmm. Molecules have existed for 14 and a half billion years since the time of the Big Bang. The word molecule is perhaps only a couple of hundred years old when people started to realise that particles, uh, what, that we had good evidence that matter consisted of particles, and let's call them either atoms or molecules. The reaction between a solution of carbon dioxide in water and limestone has been happening forever, but the term acid-base equation, re chemical reactions, is a relatively recent one. Right? Words are artificial. They're human constructs. They're fairly arbitrary. For uh, this, instead of strong and weak, we could have used all of solutes and some of 
solutes instead of strong and weak. We use strong and weak. Once they're adopted, they've got particular meanings. We need to recognise what those meanings are and we need to use them in their precise ways. Okay? Use them in their precise ways. Great.